Number ten. Too much of a good thing can be bad. Kitakoji's book of accusations were an opportunity for Jani's agency. Until then, they had been on an equal footing with the media. Learned that it could be controlled the media as it wished by directly complaining to the head of the media and pressing them, saying, "If anything happens, our talent will not be released." It has kept. The media under control. It is the Janitan who helped to keep the media under control. Janitan is an abbreviation for the person in charge at the Janis agency. It was set up as a contact person with the Janis agency for many media types, not just TV stations. This system was created by Janis' sister, Vice President Mary Kitagawa. She controls the media with the power she has built up against popular idols. The case that Mary decided on was absolute. Mary's intentions were communicated by Suguru Shirase, who rose from public relations officer to vice president. Shirase is a top executive, an expert, and communicator. Who has thoroughly done his job to reflect the wishes of Jani and Mary to the best of his ability? He has been cajoling the media for many years with his ability to use both candy and stick method. What is great about Shirase is able to handle presentations and scandals, so to speak, in times of peace and emergencies, at the same time. He was present at almost every site. He also created some sort of pipeline to hostile media, and left room for negotiation in case of trouble. He was a man who did a superman job of keeping perfect track of the schedules of his many talents. Shirase has been doing the dirty work of Janis for about half a century. And is said to be someone who knows all the ins and outs of the agency. In principle, there is a golden rule that only Janitan are allowed to cover and report on the Janis agency. The interviewer consults the Janitan first, even if it's an original story. The Janitan asks the agency for permission. If they report without permission from the agency, they will not be able to report on the Janis agency in the future. Television could also affect other programs. The fact that there were many fans amongst the Janitan also complicated the relationship. The fan mentality of wanting to protect their favorite talent is at work. And they don't feel uncomfortable with inconvenient stories. There have been many cases of inconvenient truths being covered up by using people who are easy for the agency to control as janitan. The janitan, as if they were PR persons sent by janis, were also visible in the media and carry out their state arrangements. They had made with Shirase. There was no room for others to argue with the Janitan. Of course, there are various return benefits for them. It said that they were invited to a reception held by the Janis agency, where they were entertained by the agency's talent. The agency organized a business trip in connection with. An Arashi concert in Hawaii in 2014. A TV station official testified about this at the time, saying, "All TV stations and all main sports newspapers were invited to the tour. Airline seats are in business class, and hotels are of the highest class. It seems that." The Janis agency side basically paid for the local meals as well, 
and they couldn't have been treated more generously. The total cost of travel and accommodation for the media on the invitational tours was said to be around 1 million yen per person. According to a source in the entertainment industry, I was given a Birkin by Elmas, known for its luxury bags, according to a female showbiz reporter who told us. TV stations send entertainment reporters to the scene of celebrity scandals to interview the person in question directly. Luxury goods may have been part of getting the media on the side of the agency. Client dinner is not limited to the Janice agency. Only the Janice agency would be able to provide such a large scale of entertainment. Many media bowed to Mary's pressure and discovery became the norm. Except for the Janice, they half heartedly stated. Danny Dan played the role of lubricants to maintain a moderate relationship with the agency. TV stations always try to consider Danny's agency's feelings or wishes. Let's take SMAP as an example. It was 1996 when the member Katsuyuki Mori left SMAP to become an auto racer. This was a month following the start of the broadcast of the group's crown program, SMAP SMAP. Mori took the racer's examination without telling the agency. It seemed that he pushed Mary's buttons. Mary told a producer who tried to report positively on the fact that Mori had passed the auto racer's examinations. There was no Mori in SMAP, was there? He wasn't there from the beginning. Mori isn't a member of SMAP. Since then, the media have complied with Mori Katsuyuki's debut in auto racing, even following an unreasonable request not to include him as an ex-SMAP. Mori was ruled out of SMAP by the Mary's last word. No past footage of Mori's time in SMAP is now broadcast. It appears that the remaining members were also forbidden to talk about Mori's withdrawal from the group. Of course, the media were not allowed to cover the story. Next, TV stations that didn't refer to him as suspect but as Goro Inagaki member during the arrest of SMAP's Goro Inagaki in 2001, rephrased the word. Inagaki was caught red-handed at the time on suspicion of obstructing public order and violating the Road Traffic Act. During a parking offense, a police officer asked for his license and when he sped off his vehicle, body made contact with the officer, injuring him for a total of five days, a veteran entertainment reporter recalls. When the news of Inagagi's arrest was received, the top organizers of the key stations in Tokyo gathered for a countermeasures meeting under the order of Fuji TV which has a popular program, SMAP SMAP. On the agenda of the meeting was a calling of Inagaki in news programs. All broadcasters have standardized the term Inagaki member as Inagaki suspect would damage his own image. This is an unprecedented event. Masaru Nashimoto, a veteran commentator at the time, was furious when his staff asked him not to comment on any news about the Inagaki suspect. He refused to appear on the program. Almost all print media, including newspapers and magazines, used suspect so the incident 
highlighted the dominance of the Chinese agency on television. Also, the media called him a suspect immediately after his arrest. SMAP's manager, Ms. Ai, who had immense power at the time, was furious. Ms. Ai has applied pressure with the help of influential persons in the entertainment industry. She said, I won't let SMAP appear on SMAP SMAP anymore, and intervened in the reporting. As an aside popular commentator, Masaru Nashimoto might be getting marginalized from the media after refusing to appear. In this way, the Chinese agency has crushed many talents outside the agency who have not been willing to do so. When Tsuyoshi Kusanagi was called red-handed in 2009 for public indecency after being drunk and naked in a park, the member was taken instead of the suspect. The ultimate in this was a public apology by all SMAP members. After the Shukan Bunshun incident, Michi Ijima had turned to Akitomo Tanabe, president of the Tanabe Agency, known as the dawn of the entertainment industry, to ask him to transfer and to take on herself and SMAP. The Chinese Agency and the Tanabe Agency held discussions below the surface. Ijima and SMAP were reported to have left the agency when their contracts were up for renewal in 2016, and talks, and talks of a transfer to Kadash, an affiliate of the Tanabe Agency, were said to have been finalized. Ostensibly, talks were underway for the transfer of all five members. However, Takuya Kimura consistently choose to remain in the office from the outset. Ijima's intentions were off the table, as he had no hesitation in remaining at the last interview. He is the only married man in the group and is said to have stayed behind for the benefit of his family. Kimura's wife, Shizuka Kudo, was famously close to Mary. Transfer talks, which had been based on the assumption that all five members would be transferred, were abandoned at this point. January 2016, sports newspapers hit the headlines with the news that SMAP had broken up. It's also reported that the Chinese agency initially intended to break up SMAP hang the four members, push out at showbiz, and let Kimura alone push on as a solo artist. The weekly Shincho clearly documented the events leading up to Mary's hosting of Ijima. The agency was flooded with protest calls. The Chinese agency has the media write articles about the four regretting their independence plans. They also put Kimura in the role of mediator with the agency, offering the four men a helping hand. By forcing the four to admit their own faults, they sought to undermine support for the four and at the same time give the impression of Kimura's broad-mindedness. At this point, Kimura had met Jani before the other four. At first, he was reluctant to take on this role, but eventually, Jani even got down on his knees to placate the delirious Mary. Kimura decided to take it on, albeit reluctantly. However, Mary's confusion didn't abate at all, and she continued to make a lot of phone calls to the journalists in charge of the case blasting Ijima and the four members with bad news and scandals that had no basis in fact. Jani, who had been spoon-fed a spoon against Mary's outburst, 
came to the rescue and set up a meeting with the members. He met with all four except Kimura late at night and worked with them on the spot, for which he apologized. However, Mary didn't show up. It has been decided to borrow a slot on the SMAP SMAP program to broadcast an apology message by the four members excluding Kimura and ask for Mary's forgiveness. It's unprecedented to use a television variety show as a forum for explanation. The sports newspaper of the same day reported that Kimura had discussed the matter with agency executives and decided to call it off with Ijima's departure from the agency, thus raising the prospect of SMAP's continued existence. Osamu Suzuki, the SMAP SMAP TV writer, published his novel 20160118 in Bungei Shunju magazine, which describes a story behind the five members' live apology broadcast on 18 January 2016 on SMAP SMAP. The novel describes the circumstances surrounding the day's emergency live broadcast in novel form. Suzuki prepared the draft of the apology for the emergency live broadcast. The contents of the draft were approved by the Chinese agency once it had been written. An hour before the start of the broadcast, one of the top women in the founding family gave a strong no no to Suzuki's manuscript. Suzuki hasn't stated who she is, but the back and forth, and the fact that she is the head of the founding family make it virtually certain that she is Mary. Thanks to one of our members who has been with us for over 25 years now, giving us the opportunity to apologize to President Jani. Now we are standing here, she was ordered to make sure that Nakai says that. The agency clearly deliberately differentiated between Kimura and the other four in terms of their standing positions, what they said, and their costumes. Kusanagi's I'll give you a chance to apologize to President Jani was originally supposed to be handled by the leader Masahiro Nakai. It was reportedly applied to Kusanagi, who took over the job instead because Nakai was reluctant to do so. His statement clearly demonstrated to viewers the high handedness and old fashioned nature of the Chinese executives. As all four members except Kimura had empty expressions, the internet gave the cryptic term public execution to the incident as Janice forced the members to apologize. It was also discussed that Nakai had pinched his own hand during the broadcast. The female announcer who was in charge of the proceedings had a faint tremor. In her hand. Talent, who planned to leave the Janis agency, must apologize to President Jani Kitagawa and bow down to him on TV all over Japan. The apology was to inform viewers of the unusual code of the entertainment industry. The Broadcasting Ethics and Program Improvement Organization. BPO received some 2,800 comments during January, temporarily talking down access to the official website. Before the broadcast, the four were reportedly made to visit Kimura's dressing room to apologies, but Nakai was furious at the way he had been treated. After the broadcast, he reportedly Ordered the other members not to speak to Kimura. Fuji Televi approached each station to use the footage once it had received 
an inquiry from them about the contents of the program. The case was covered in news programs, including the backup program, news station, Telebi Asahi. There was some anger among TV station staffs at this indirect complicity and exposure in the name of reporting. After the broadcast, a dinner with senior and junior talents from the agency was held and the commotion came to an end. The media, under pressure from the Japanese agency, distracted the public by relentlessly bashing female celebrities whose scandals broke out at exactly the same time. The SMAP breakup scandal was officially treated as a done deal. Ijima Michi left the agency alone, bearing the full brunt of the independent scandal. And was expelled from the entertainment industry. The media used to treat the Japanese very carefully, but they began to actively use the Japanese agency as an opportunity to make a public apology. Sports newspapers obtained leaks of stories by writing articles that were fully in line with the wishes of the Japanese agency. The television station didn't conduct any independent interviews with the agency or its members, but presented the print editions of sports newspapers. This was also at the direction of the agency. This was particularly the case at Fuji Television, which avoided direct coverage of the SMAP SMAP side of the story. Despite being provided with behind the scenes footage by its own program. What is ag- ugly about Fuji Television is that it has used the incident to gain ratings. The decision was made to make full use of such treasured footage. After the SMAP SMAP broadcast, it was used over and over again in other programs. The lack of moderation and Diversion was irritating to watch. It was as if they went out of their way to expose the incompetence of their own station and oozed a n disagreeable and flatter sense of being able to connect to numbers without pretense. Many viewers must have sensed the disgusting side of Fuji Television. Incidentally, Fuji Television is where Julie Fujishima used to work. Of course, other agencies also have sanctions against their own talent. It's unusual that the media is also complicit in these publicly unfolding sanctions. The internet and other media remain dirtful of the high handedness and coercion of the Japanese agency towards its members and the media.